Hey, what's up guys? In this video, we're going to be talking about Luminar 4, reviewing it for landscape photography and seeing is it actually still a viable option? What are the changes that they've made and what are some of the improvements that they've made to the software, pros, cons, all those things coming up. Hey, what's up guys? Thanks for joining me for this video and I've been using Luminar 4 for a few weeks now and I've had to get my hands really deep into it to see what are some of the changes that they've made, my thoughts on it. Is it a viable option for you as a landscape photographer if you wanna ditch those subscription plans? Let's get right into it. Oh, but real quick, before I get into the editing parts and showing you how these features work, if you want to get Luminar 4, you can click on the link in the video description below and it's really going to help you out in your landscape photography. Let's get to how we actually use this though. The first thing that I really enjoy is their organization of their library. So if you'll see here, you know, I have tons of images, all photos from this past year, 5,121 images. I have tons that I have to go through, organize, sort out for projects, all that stuff. It makes it really easy for me to just scroll through here and be like, okay, well, I like this one and I'll hold down my control or command key and say, well, I like, you know, click on that. I like that one. And if I find several that I like in a row, I can just click on these going down. Let's say I like that one too. And I can hit my one key and that's going to sort these out as a one star. Now this helps me visualize this because if I'm in all photos and I want to really narrow it down to my favorites, I can go to all photos here and I can go to one star or more and it'll organize those out for me. And you'll see all my one starred images that I have here that I've either not edited yet or worked on already. Or what I can also do is speaking of favorites, if I want to narrow this down even more and say, wow, I really like, you know, some of these other images that I have here, let's say this one of the blue heron in fall, I can click on this little heart down here. Let's say I like this one too, and this one. And what that's going to do is allow me to subcategorize these into some of my favorites. So I can come over here and click on favorites and now I have all of my favorite images showing up in this folder. The organization really helps me as a landscape photographer keep my projects in line if I wanna make a completely new subfolder or if I just wanna favorite or star things out, it allows me to do that and organize my trips, organize some of the things I've done and know, okay, I shot this in 2019. I can scroll down here go to 2019, click my down arrow and see every single month that I went out and shot and what photos that I took in each month. That really helps me a lot and I love that feature in here. What about the editing part of Luminar 4? Let's get into that. Let's work on this image here. This is an image I shot in Florida and it just has a really cool sky. I like the composition, how it just kind of runs down into the rising sun down here. What are the editing tools that are most powerful in Luminar 4 and what can we use to really enhance our images? So right off the bat in the editing window, we can see the histogram here, representation of all the color data that's going on in this image. And you can honestly see right off the bat some of the changes that they've made in the organizational features of their editing menu. So we have layers, canvas this is going to be your tools like crop spot removal or just subject removal and then we have all of our edits down here and essentials creative portraits and pro now these are sectioned up into basically like little subcategories within each of these honestly i wasn't a huge fan of this right off the bat when i opened it and it really deterred me for a little while until i started getting into them and learning the menus i know when you open a new software, use a new piece of equipment for landscape photography it can seem overwhelming or you just want to go back to what you were using. But learning those things and really trying to dial in the best way to use them will help you become a better landscape photographer. I've really come to like this style of menu after using it for a few weeks. And one of the main things that I do love is the layers feature here. I mean, I love using other softwares for their layer capability, such as 
Photoshop, such as using Photoshop and Lightroom together. But I love how the layers section is smashed into one software here. We don't have to switch back and forth between two softwares to access layers. We can easily use them all in one here and I really enjoy that and I really appreciate that from them. Canvas tools, like I said, crop, rotate, erase, clone, stamp. One thing I did realize right off the bat is you have to use these things first. So let's say I wanted to clone stamp something out. If I clone and stamp, this comes up. I have to stamp anything out that I want out right off the bat. So let's say I don't like this little cloud right here. I can hover my source here and then make my brush smaller. And just for the features of this video, just brush this out at 100% opacity and then hit done. Now that's gone, but I now have a base layer to work from here and I don't have to go back and work on that in other layers. I can always come back to this one. So I can go to layers and show you that. Now I have this clone stamp layer here. For some reason, my lens had this bar on the side. I'm gonna just crop and erase that, bring that in to remove that black bar, and now that's done. So what we have here is the base image file. So what I wanna do is create a new layer here, add a new adjustment layer, and now I'll start working with my colors. So I love using basic adjustments first, getting everything dialed in on my foundation of my image. I'll just go to some of my light features. You can see this is categorized up into how you would want it, exposure, contrast. Smart contrast is really cool because it makes like contrast in your image, but not so much that it's like so obvious of what you're doing. It kind of makes a subtle contrast effect. Highlights and shadows. Those are pretty good in this image. I'm gonna bring my shadows up pretty significantly here to really bring out the details in the sand, the tree, and the plant life on the side. That looks pretty good, I like that. AI Enhance, what I love about Skylum software and Luminar 4 in particular is their artificial intelligence edits. And I can see a lot of the staunch users out there who are kind of like the old school garb in landscape photography being like, AI is cheating. It's not, it's just speeding up your edits when you know what they're using in it. So with something like AI Accent, what I can do is pull this up and see, okay, now I'm working with saturation vibrance, I'm working with my shadows and my highlights all at once and my contrast all at once. So I can see what it's doing here. I don't wanna go crazy with this and pull it up to an unrealistic effect. I just wanna subtle edit here. So maybe like 21, something like that. And then I can go to AI structure. This is gonna be basically like your clarity, how much detail you want on those edits. And that's pretty cool. I like the AI features because it helps me make faster edits, but also more professional edits. And I really like that. It, it kind of re removes some of the guessing game for a lot of photographers who are like, well, is contrast gonna work here? Is, is vibrance or saturation? It's kind of like this all in one slider that you know is gonna make your image look better. So color, obviously saturation and vibrance here, I'm gonna increase like I would in any photograph, but I love advanced settings within these edits too. So I can click on advanced settings and subcategorize all these colors here. And each one of these options like color, light, AI enhanced, they all have the advanced settings edits on them. So I'm just gonna click through these like saturation of my oranges. I'm gonna increase the luminance on those two. Greens, I can increase the sats on those and then really make those pop out, especially on the right side of this image, make those a little bit more luminant. Uh, blues, you know, sky, I want a deep blue sky, but you know, I honestly have a lot of different colors going on in this image and balancing those with each one of these like little features is really what I want out of my software. I don't even have to use my sats. I can just bump up the luminance on those. I'm going to do that too with the blue and make some of these features like really pop out some. That looks pretty good. So I'm just going to decrease my color here. 
And then I'm gonna go back to my shadows. I'm gonna increase that a little bit more, maybe increase my contrast and my exposure a little bit more. I like bouncing around with my edits and trying to find like a good balance between them. And then landscape enhancer, look, I can go to like golden hour. I can make this a little bit more warm of an image, add some effect there. I'm not gonna do that too much with this one. Foliage enhancer, I can increase the enhancement of a lot of the trees, a lot of the shrubbery that's down here on the right side of the image. It's just a very easy way to edit the image. And then also creative, like there are a lot more things you can do within this. If I wanted to split this up into a different layer, I could come up here and do a new adjustment layer for each one of these. And I can go to like a mystical look I really like that. Not too crazy about the name, but the effect is pretty cool, how it makes it just kind of a little bit more flat. It makes it a little bit more like essence of the mood of what you are photographing and not just so in your face colors, here you go. And then you can also add things like a glow, uh, fog. I really like all these features. It kind of subcategorizes your images into different sections of what the effects were like. So if I did have a foggy morning, I could increase the fog look of that a little bit more and kind of bring out more of that fog detail. It just depends on what you were kind of shooting with and what your atmosphere was like, what the conditions were like when you were out there. Let's go to pro mode. Pro, you know, advanced contrast is, is something that I like a lot. It splits my contrast into three different categories of highlights, midtones, and shadows and really helps me boost the contrast of all three of those. I'm really gonna boost the contrast of my shadows here. I wanna pull the most detail out of those as possible. So I'm gonna increase that a pretty good amount. And then we also have things like, I'm actually going to make this a little bit more warm rather than so blue here. Warm this image up just a little bit. That looks a little bit better. And there you go. So one of the things that I know is getting a, a lot of interest from people is the AI sky replacement tool. Look, the AI sky replacement tool is a fantastic feature for certain situations. I personally am not a composite shooter. I don't like to add skies from one morning to a different morning's landscape. I, I don't really do that, it's not my style. I understand a lot of people do that and I think that's awesome. I marvel at your creativity of landscape photography. That's just not really my thing. I can see how the AI sky replacement would be a tremendous way to use this tool and a tremendous way to use this for certain situations. Real estate photography, composite photography, portrait photography, all these things would be a great use of using this tool. So I'm not bashing the tool. I just think landscape photographers can be more creative about how to use that. So what you can do here is actually load in a different sky from that morning. So if you aren't a composite shooter, like taking different parts of different images and smashing them together, what you can do is use this for something like a lot of high dynamic range where you take a really long exposure for your foreground and then take a quicker exposure for the brightness of the sky and then put those two together from the same day. I can totally get behind doing something like that because it's a strategy that I've used before for my landscapes, taking it the same conditions the same morning, just different exposures and matching those together. I think it's amazing you can use this tool in Luminar 4 because you used to have to do all of this and, and blending options and blending modes in Photoshop and it took forever. I can just do one click of the button here and it allows me to do this really fast. I appreciate that, I enjoy that, I think it's fantastic. All right, I'm gonna get off my soapbox now and continue on. One of the things I do think is most powerful here in my layers, I can go to add layer, add a new adjustment layer. Let's say I want to work on my color a little bit more. So I'll go to, you know, increase my saturation and vibrance a little bit more. And what I can do is when this looks like just out of bounds, out of the realm of reality, and just pushing it to the edge, what I like to do is take those edits, like this is too much for me, 
but what I can do is come down here to go to edit mask. Now I have different options of, I can either paint this effect in with a brush, I can use a radial mask that'll put the edit on the outside or inside of whatever I'm choosing to edit. I can do a gradient mask if I wanted to do this just in the sky, I could drop down a gradient mask with that in it. What I think is amazing here is using luminosity masks within this software. It takes what you would have to do for like two hours worth of edit work with something like Lightroom and Photoshop. I'm not bashing those softwares. I think they're very powerful softwares. I still use them sometimes. And I take this effect and with one click, I can apply this effect to only the 50% gray and lighter areas of my image and it will create a mask for me. So I'm just gonna do that. I'm gonna hit luminosity mask and it's actually going to adjust this image for me, create that mask for me. What would normally take me a long period of time to do in Photoshop, I can easily do now with my own layer, with my own mask and with my own effect all in one click. So just to show you the final result, I can go to the before and after look Here's the before of what it was. Here's the after of what I was able to achieve with a lot of these edits. Like I said, fast, professional, creative, powerful, all things I would use to describe Luminar 4. I've actually really enjoyed using this software and it's become my main source of editing. I've done tons of my latest images from fall from late summer with Luminar 4, really enhancing the fall foliage. There's a foliage enhancer on here. There's all sorts of things for landscape photographers that can be used. What are some of the cons here? Some of the cons are it does seem to lag a little bit when you get a lot of these layers and edits going at one time, which is totally understandable. I think it's easy to take that and, and just say, well, this is a slow software, but the same thing kind of happens with Photoshop. If you've used it for a while, if you're stacking tons of masks on top of each other, you know, it does slow down a little bit. Also, I have had this crash a couple times. It's also fair to say I've had Lightroom crash more on me in the past few months than it ever has. I've had Photoshop crash. I mean, even editing videos like this one, I've had Premiere Pro and After Effects crash several times. So saying that this crashes isn't really a fair review or assumption of it because every software crashes. It's just this crashes too. <laughs> so just don't discount this because it crashes because all other softwares crash as well. Some of the other cons here are that this does not merge something like Star Trails. I do Star Trails a lot for my photography. You know, this does not do that. It doesn't have the power to do that. I'm still gonna have to use Photoshop to do that. I think some of the night photography is limited on this while you still can do like a Milky Way edit with this. Some of the other night photography features are a little bit limited. Also, this will not merge HDR or panorama images like Lightroom will do. You can get Affinity Photo from Skylum Software, but you will have to switch back and forth between those unless you get a plugin for Luminar 4. But all that to say, I do think in the future they need to do better on their speed. I think in the future they need to add this pano feature for landscape photographers, uh, easy, easier HDR feature for landscape photographers. But everything else I think is absolutely fantastic in this software. Like I said, it's become my main editing software. I was using Lightroom a little bit more until I really got deep into Luminar 4 and then I switched back to using this for a lot more of my edits. So I think that with this software you can easily produce really highly professional landscape photographs quickly, effectively, and with very little knowledge of editing. And I think that's going to ring true and ring a positive for a lot of beginner photographers. I do highly recommend this. If you want a link for Luminar 4, you can click on the link in the video description below for that. Thanks so much for watching guys. I hope you like using Luminar 4 if you decide to get it, but thanks so much for watching this channel. You can subscribe for more videos on editing or in the field photography.